This is a Queen Mary's College video on the shapes of simple covalent molecules and this is produced for the new linear course and if you can have your knowledge pack open on page 42. Just to remind you that simple covalent molecules made up of just non-metals, that's normally the case. And to have a shape you're looking at molecules to have at least three atoms. Covalent bonds, of course, between the atoms. And just to remind you there that two electrons shared is a single covalent bond. So let's take a look at the first molecule, beryllium chloride. Don't worry about this example where beryllium only has four electrons in the outer shell. We're looking at beryllium being the central atom and just two groups of electrons. So a single covalent bond is said to be a, a group of electrons and so two single covalent bonds around the beryllium is two groups of electrons. And the idea when it comes to shapes is that the electrons being negatively charged repel each other and move as far away from each other as possible. And that gives us a linear shape based on the electron pair repulsion theory. And you can see that this linear shape is simply where you've got three atoms in a row. So that's the linear shape molecule and the bond angle is 180 degrees for any linear molecule. Let's take a look at a molecule which has three groups of electrons, so boron trifluoride. Here you can see boron with three groups of electrons around the uh, central atom there. Again, these electron groups will repel each other and move as far away from each other as possible, giving us this rather flat shape, which is described as planar. You can see it's triangular. And so the shape is described as a triangular planar shape, bond angle 120 degrees. Here we have methane, CH4. You can see from the dot cross diagram that there's four groups of electrons around the central carbon atom. And once again, those electron pairs, those four pairs of electrons would repel each other and move as far away from each other as possible, giving us a new shape, a tetrahedral shape. Joining the points of the uh, molecule gives us a four-sided figure, hence the, uh, the name of the shape is tetrahedral, and the bond angle is 109.5. Just to remind you about the 3D representation for molecules where you've got a bond coming towards you that's shown as a long triangle and if there's a bond behind the molecule then that's shown as a dotted line and ordinary uh, lines showing bonds in the same plane as the paper. So moving on to another molecule, phosphorus pentachloride you've got phosphorus as the central atom and you can see there's five groups of electrons around that central phosphorus atom so again repulsion brings us another shape this is the triangular bipyramid shape you've got a triangle in the middle of the molecule and the bond angle there is 120 Moving on to sulfur hexafluoride, again from the dot cross diagram you can see there's six groups of electrons around the sulfur atom. So again they're going to repel each other according to the electron pair repulsion theory and we get an octahedral shape which is a little bit of a surprise because we are looking at a molecule with six electron groups. And octahedral does suggest eight, but that's because when you join up the points of the molecule, you get an eight-sided figure, so that's why it's named that way. 
all the bond angles in this case are 90 degrees. Moving on to this molecule, ammonia, NH3. Again, you can see from the dot cross diagram, there's four groups of electrons. But this time we've got one lone pair and three ordinary bonding pairs. So again, the electrons will repel each other. But something different happens here because the lone pair of electrons does bring about a, a small distortion of the, uh, the shape that you would expect. And this is because lone pairs bring about extra repulsion. And that's because of their shape. They are much shorter and rounder than an ordinary bond. And so that brings about an extra repelling effect. So there you can see in the diagram the lone pair of electrons short and, um, and more round in shape is pushing the uh, ordinary bonds ever so slightly closer together. So you might expect a tetrahedron when you're dealing with four groups of electrons, but because the, uh, of the ex extra repelling effect of the lone pair, the bond angle drops from 109.5 ever so slightly to 107. Because you can't see the lone pair of electrons, you can just see the bonds. In terms of the shape, we have a pyramid shape. A triangular pyramid shape and the bond angle is 107 degrees. So note there that the lone pair doesn't take part in the, the, the shape of the molecule. Let's take a look at water molecule. You can see from the uh, dot cross diagram, once again we've got four groups of electrons, but this time two of them are lone pairs of electrons and two are ordinary bonding pairs. So again we're getting repulsion of those electron pairs, um, groups of electrons. And because we've got two lone pairs of electrons that's going to bring about once again a distortion of the expected shape. Because two lone pairs exert an even greater repulsion, far more so than a the repulsion that might exist between two ordinary bonds or even the repulsion between a lone pair and a bonding pair. So as you can see from the diagram we've got two lone pairs, significant repulsion between them and that brings the, uh, the bond angle that you'd expect 109.5 right down to 104.5. So where you've got two lone pairs and two bonding pairs instead of the 109 degrees you'd expect for four groups of electrons the bond is bond angle is slightly smaller at 104.5 since the lone pairs are not included in this shape we have a molecule that's described as v-shaped or just bent So just to finish on a, a summary of the, um, the last three examples, so the tetrahedral shape where you've got four groups of electrons, 109.5, but where you've got four groups of electrons but one is a lone pair, the bond angle drops to 107, and that gives us a pyramidal shape. And where you've got two lone pairs of electrons, the bond angle drops to 104.5, giving us a bent shape. So check the knowledge pack to see that the information does tie up with what we've just been talking about. Here's a rather unusual example, which is worth including. Sulfur dioxide, you can see from the dot cross diagram, it does include a data covalent bond. So hence the, uh, the, the, the same symbol is used to denote the, uh, the shared electrons and there's a double bond there but all told you've got three groups of electrons around the central sulfur atom
So as we said, then we've got three groups of electrons. A double bond is considered to be one group, a lone pair another, and a dative bond another. So three groups of electrons. Once again, the, the lone pair is going to exert a greater repelling effect and will push the other two bonds closer together. And so our bond angle is going to be 118, just slightly less than the, the 120 degrees that you might expect for the three groups of electrons. So again, the shape is just associated with the, uh, the bonds there. So we, once again, we've got the V-shaped molecule.